Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials, bringing us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 16, and it's video number 9 in the subsection on Maxwell's equations. Specifically in this video, I'm going to show why the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. This leads directly on from the previous video, number 15, where I showed why the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to the propagation vector k. So before we begin, let's just discuss a, the general form of the electric field or the equation for the electric field. So here I've drawn that the electric field E, the vector, is equal to its amplitude E0 times the exponential. Now in order to discuss this we need to note which direction this wave is propagating. So this, this wave is propagating in let's say the Z direction. So here might be the Y and here might be the X. So the wave is propagating in the Z direction. Now immediately from video number 15 we know that the electric field does not have a component in the z direction as a result it's so the electric and magnetic fields will, will exist on a plane in the xy plane. Okay so how do we write the equation for the electric field? Where do we, how do we do this correctly? Well we note that because it's going in the z direction we have the component z here. Now because it's a vector we should give it a unit vector. Now it's, it cannot be k hat which would be in the z direction because it's propagating in the z direction. So the electric field either exists in the i hat direction or the j hat direction. And what we'll see in this video is that if the electric field is in the i hat direction, well then the magnetic field will be in the j hat direction and vice versa. Okay, so here we have the initial amplitude E0. This is the amplitude of the, the entire wave. It has a component, of course, in the in this case, in the x direction and in the, the y direction, depending on on where, it, wh where it's moving. So we now need to just think about the propagation vector and I, I need to just point something out that I suppose the convention is to use k for the propagation vector. Okay so let's say this is the propagation vector there but I'm also going to use k for the unit vector in the z, in the z direction. So we're going to have to try and not confuse the k hat unit vector of the z dimension with the k vector of the propagate the k propagation vector and it becomes even more complicated when if we want to use the propagation unit vector which would exactly which would be this so there's no way of telling them apart you just need to know that they are different anyway just that's just to note something at the start it's hard to avoid now in showing that the electric and magnetic fields were perpendicular to the propagation vector we used maxwell's equations Specifically, we used the Gauss's law for electric fields and we used Gauss's law for magnetic fields. And we showed that using both of these expressions we could come up with that the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to the propagation vector. So, as a first step, we would assume, of course, the Max that Maxwell's equations are going to also give us the condition saying that the electric and magnetic fields are themselves perpendicular. But of course, the Gauss's laws are not, or Gauss's laws are not going to give us anything new because they gave us, they gave us the condition we've already seen. So what we need to now lo look at is which of the remaining two do we use? Do we use Faraday's law, or do we use Ampere's law? Now you can try both, but I'm going to tell you straight away that we will not be using Ampere's law. So we'll just use Faraday's law. So let's write down what Faraday's law for electromagnetic induction states. It says you take the curl of the electric field, you're going to get m minus the time rate of change of the magnetic field. So what we need to do now is compute both the curl of the electric field and the time rate of change of the magnetic field. Now I'm not going to insult your intelligence, I'm sure you know how to take a cross product. So I'm going to take the, the, the curl of the electric field. So we're going to get the following. We're going to get del E sub z, E0 sub z del y minus del E0 sub y del z. And this is in the i hat direction. Minus del E0 sub z del x minus del E0 sub x del z that's in the j hat direction and finally we have to add to that 
del E0 sub Y del X minus del E0 sub X del Y. Now what we need to do is let that equal to the neg negative the time rate of change of the magnetic field. So in order to get the time rate of change of the magnetic field, it's just simply going to be, uh, we'll say it's going to be minus del B0 sub X del T minus del B0 sub Y del T and del B0 sub Z del T like that. Now we need to remind ourselves of the results of video number 15. In this video, because we are we're using the same, the same electric field and magnetic field, which is propagating in the Z direction, we know that it does not have a component in the Z direction. So we cross out this one, we cross out this one as well. And we finally cross out this one. Okay, so we know that we have no component in the Z direction because that's the direction of propagation and that's exactly what we showed in video 15. So what we're left with is the following. So let's say, let's just take one of these conditions for example. We're going to get minus del E0 sub X del Z and we're going to have that equal to minus del B0 sub X del T. So what we need to do now is compute the particular derivatives. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we know that the magnetic field has the same uh, is of the same form as this here. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure we can do that. So del B zero sub x del t is going to be equal to B zero sub x times minus omega times the exponential and del E0, excuse me, that should be that's a typo there, I'm going to take this one, sorry, del E0 sub Y del Z, okay? So we're going to have del E0 sub Y del Z is going to be equal to E0 sub Y times K times the exponential, okay, like that. When you put both of these conditions together and e uh, make them equal like we have above, what we get is minus B0 sub X times omega is equal to K times E0 sub Y. All right, now there is a similar condition which we can get if we use the other equations, but putting them all together, we get the following. We get that minus K outside of E0 sub Y Is equal to uh, is equal to omega times b zero sub x, and we can also say that k times e zero sub x is going to be equal to omega times b zero sub y. Now don't don't get don't get uh, hung up on the fact that we have a minus sign. We'll explain that in a moment. So this is in the particular case where we have the electric and magnetic field propagating in the Z direction, existing somewhere on the IJ plane, and now we'll see that they both are perpendicular to each other. So the best way of writing this, or the most compact way of writing this, uh, this conclusion, is by saying that we have the, the magnetic field, say B0, the amplitude of the magnetic field is K over omega times cross product with the electric field. Now, this uh, I said at the start we get it, the nomenclature is, diff is difficult. I'm going to write k hat. Now, so it's it's the propagation unit vector. It is not the uh, it's not the z unit vector. It's the propagation unit vector, okay? So for example, if we're moving the i hat direction, uh, it would it would in fact be i hat, but it's the propagation unit vector. Okay, now the interesting point here is that when we discussed the phase velocity, we found that the phase, phase velocity V is omega over K. And when we plugged in the values, what we found for electromagnetic waves, this is equal to C, we know that. So we can rewrite this as being C. 
or excuse me, as being 1 over C. So what we find is that the magnitude of the magnetic field multiplied by C is equal to the magnitude of the electric field. So we're after finding two very important, uh, two very important conclusions. And the conclusions are, first of all, that E is perpendicular to B because the cross product means that they are perpendicular. Similarly, their magnitudes are similar, but with their, the magnitudes are proportional, of course, with the, uh, the speed of light being the proportionality constant. So, so far what we've proven, so far what we've proven is that E is perpendicular to the propagation vector K. B is also perpendicular to the propagation vector K. And that E is perpendicular to B. And finally we showed that the magnitude of the electric field is C times the magnitude of the magnetic field. So just to give an example, imagine that we had the following electric and magnetic fields. Let's say once again it's propagating in the Z direction. So we're going to have the amplitude and we're going to have e to the i kz minus omega x or minus omega t e to the i kz minus omega t and let's say that the electric field exists in the i hat unit vector direction now because the wave is propagating in the z direction or the k hat unit vector direction and the electric field exists in the i hat unit vector direction that means that the magnetic field must exist on the j hat unit vector direction so it's propagating in the z direction and it has a magnitude of b0 it's got the, the, the same exponential and we must add the j hat unit vector to it now we saw a moment ago that the magnitude of the magnetic field is just going to be uh, it's just going to be e over c like this and finally just to i suppose be uh, to be as complete as we possibly can be just taking the real component of the electric field, we find that the electric field function of z and t is going to be equal to E0 times a cosine of kz minus omega t. And that is how we take the real component. Okay, so we work with the exponentials and then we take the trigonometric functions. Now I just want to show you one final thing, just while I, while I, I may or may not have your attention that sometimes people, when they're talking about the exponentials, they might have, let's say, this a tilde, say a tilde over their magnetic field or the electric field, and they would give their amplitude also a tilde. And the reason they give it a tilde is what they're saying is it's a complex, it's a complex amplitude or it's a complex, uh, it's a complex magnetic field. Now how they do this is as follows. See, I, all the time I've been ignoring the fact that we can have a, a phase shift. But let's say, for example, we had the following electric field. So let's say there was a phase shift of delta like that. So in order, so I'm going to work backwards. Let's say this is the actual, this is the real electric field. And I want to work backwards. So I want to make it, I want to exponentiate it. What I do is I put a tilde on the electric field like this. And I put a tilde on its amplitude. Noting that the, the, the e tilde is equal to e to the i delta. Uh, e to the i delta, yes. Okay, like that. So we, we're, we're, we're absorbing the phase into the complex amplitude. Okay, and that's just a matter of convention. You'll see some authors doing it that way and some authors not. So just to sum up once more, E perpendicular to B, and both of these perpendicular to K. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment on the box below.